Badyara Buranga, good afternoon. Waramai Ningani Iora Nagula Barawa Gumadi Jural. Welcome to 2020 Liverpool Art Society Exhibition. I would like to pay my respects to all the elders who have gone before us and those who are here today. They are the ones who have taught us our stories, law, song and dance, as these are the ways we pass on our history. To give you an idea of what it's like to be Aboriginal, I'd like to read to you a short tale originally told by Miriam Rose Ungmeyer, an Aboriginal woman from the Northern Territory who lives along the Daly River. A special quality, a unique gift of the Aboriginal people is inner deep listening and quite still awareness. Dandari recognises the deep spring that is inside us. It is something like what you would call contemplation. The competitive way of Dandari spreads over our whole life. It renews us and brings us peace. It makes us feel whole again. In our Aboriginal way, we learnt to listen from our earliest times. We could not live good and useful lives unless we listen. We are not threatened by silence. We are completely at home in it. Our Aboriginal way has taught us to be still and wait. We do not try to hurry things up. We let them follow their natural course, just like the seasons. We watch the moon in each of its phases. We wait for the rain to fill our rivers and water the thirsty earth. When twilight comes, we prepare for the night. At dawn, we rise with the sun. We watch the bush foods and wait for them to open before we gather them. We wait for our young as they grow, stage by stage, through their initiation ceremonies. When a relation dies, we wait for a long time with sorrow. We own our own grief and allow it to heal slowly. We wait for the right time for our ceremonies and meetings. The correct people must be present. Careful preparations must be made. We don't mind waiting because we want things to be done with care. Sometimes many hours will be spent painting the body before an important ceremony. We don't worry. We worry that in time and in the spirit of Dandari, the way will be made clear. We are like the tree standing in the middle of a bushfire, sweeping through the timber. The leaves are scorched and the tough, tough bark is guard and burnt. But inside the tree, the sap is still flowing and under the ground, the roots are still strong. Like that tree, we have endured the flames and we still have the power to be reborn. Our people are used to the struggle and long waiting. We still wait for the white people to understand us better. We ourselves have spent many years learning the white man's ways. We have learned to speak the white man's language. We have listened to what he had to say. Learning and listening should go both ways. We are hoping people will come closer. This land always was, is and always will be Aboriginal land. Waramai, Didjarayana, Jandali, Bulawul, Nangani. Welcome to our land, Derek land. And thank you for walking with me and strengthening my dreaming. Thank you, Auntie Lynn, for walking us all to country. I too would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and their ancestors past and present, the Calabria clan of the Darug nations. I also acknowledge that this land was accessed by the peoples of the Darug and Darug nations. Hello everybody, I'm Wendy Waller, the Mayor of the City of Liverpool, and I am delighted to join you for the launch of the 23rd Annual Liverpool Art Society Exhibition. 
I think I've been to most. Art plays an important role in shaping Liverpool's unique character. We are proud to nurture and promote the work of artists to the wider community. The annual exhibition and art prize are the result of a partnership between the Kasula Powerhouse Art Centre and the Art Society. This successful partnership started 22 years ago. I was there for that, believe it or not. Liverpool City Council is proud to continue to support this wonderful event. We have provided $5,000 for Council's overall winner prize, which places the work of the Liverpool Art Society artists into CPAC's permanent collection. I have to say, I think I have my own collection now. I've run out of walls. We have also provided a $1,500 scholarship prize, which includes an exhibition for the winning artists in the Marsden Gallery at CPAC. An exhibition by last year's scholarship prize winner, Gil Thaler, is on display in the Marsden's Gallery. I'm extremely sad to tell you that Gil passed away after a short illness in July this year. This makes the exhibition extremely emotional. The team at Kasula Powerhouse Arts Centre worked closely with Gil's family over many months to realise her vision for the exhibition, Gil Thaler, My Secret Urban Sanctuary. Gill's exhibition runs alongside the Liverpool Art Society exhibition, which you can see in the Hopper and Switch galleries. You can enjoy the exhibitions in person and online until the 27th of January 2021. Congratulations to every artist who submitted your work. It is just wonderful. I'd also like to thank this year's judge, Georgia Connolly, the manager, exhibition loans and touring at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Georgia, we are very, very glad to have you here and have you involved. Thanks also to the Liverpool Art Society team for coordinating all the entries. I know it's something you love to do. We appreciate the great work that you do. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Craig Donofsky, the director of the Kasula Powerhouse Art Centre. Hi, my name's Craig Donarski, and I'm the director of Kasula Powerhouse Art Centre, and I'm very pleased to be able to welcome you to this online awards ceremony. Firstly, I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging of the Cabrigal clan of the mighty Darug Nation, the custodians of culture and country where Kasula Powerhouse is built. We acknowledge that this land was also accessed by peoples of the Darawal and Darug nations. It always was and always will be Aboriginal land and sovereignty was never ceded. I'd also like to welcome all First Nations people who might be watching here today. Whether you're from mainland Australia, the Torres Strait Islands or Tasmania, welcome to this virtual event. In this 23rd year of the Liverpool Art Society's annual exhibition, it's full of wonderful and colourful artworks with a range as diverse and dynamic as our community. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we can't meet in person this year to announce the winners. Liverpool City Council and Kasula Powerhouse Art Centre are honoured to continue to support Liverpool Art Society in the presentation of this exhibition. The $5,000 acquisitive Liverpool City Council overall winner plot prize places the work of a Liverpool Art Society artist into the Kasula Powerhouse collection for perpetuity. The $1,500 scholarship prize includes an exhibition for the winning artist in the Marsden Gallery as a feature of our artistic program. And this year, it's with great pleasure that we present last year's winner, Gil Farler. Gill enthusiastically took to the challenge of presenting her solo exhibition, talking through the, with Kasula Powerhouse staff some of the personally meaningful themes that she explored in her artwork, her garden, nature, environment, town planning and the future. Her exhibition's titled My Secret Urban Sanctuary. Her passing in July after a short illness was a shock to all. It's with thanks to her family, Liverpool Art Society Committee and the staff at Kasula that were able to present her exhibition as intended with her own words. Congratulations to all the participating artists for their time and efforts in submitting artworks this year. A very special thank you to our honourable guest judge, Georgia Connolly, in the difficult selection of the award winners. Congratulations to Liverpool Art Society members and their team in particular, John Tregoning, Pamela Rotorita, 
Di Hallinan and the many volunteers who've offered their time and assistance to ensure that this important exhibition continues. The best way to see these incredible works by Liverpool's local talent is to come into the centre and experience the artworks in real life. If you aren't able to come into the centre, we welcome you to see the exhibition online via our website. Don't forget that these artworks are available for purchase. There's no better way to support your creative community during what's been a trying year for all than by purchasing an artwork. You can do so with cash or credit card at our front of house, or they can process purchases over the phone. I'd now like to introduce the president of Liverpool Art Society, John Tregoning. Good morning to wherever you, this very different launch of the Liverpool Art Society's and our art exhibition finds you. No jostling for a spot in the Turbine Hall this year though. But as with life, each annual cycle presents a unique range of different challenges and opportunities. And in welcoming you to the opening of the 23rd annual exhibition of the works of the talented members of the Liverpool Art Society, I'm also conscious that not only that not so many months ago, the galleries of CPAC were threatened by smoke from devastating bushfires. Then the very fabric of the building was isolated by rising floodwaters before an unseen virus ravaged our community and indeed our way of life. Indeed, we are most fortunate for this display of works, this exhibition to be held. And under these circumstances, we are most grateful for the ongoing support and sponsorship of Liverpool City Council and their awarding of the overall acquisition and scholarship prizes, the Kashula Powerhouse Art Centre under the leadership of Craig Donarski, who mount this exhibition and support ALES and promote artistic expression in Liverpool, the ANZ Bank and Carl Hadfield, whose awards for technical excellence and the History Prize are so greatly valued, the City of Liverpool and District Family History Society, and his president, Glenn Opton Brough, for their support of and promotion of Liverpool's unique historical contribution, and Liverpool Picture Framing and Anne Pham for the support she provides to those artists of the future. This year, the very welcome addition of the Werrawa Prize, the opportunity provided by the Federal Member for the seat of Werrawa and Stanley for work connected to Werrawa, one of the original electorates at the Federation of the Commonwealth of Australia, and that image to be reproduced on the electorate's Christmas card. A special thanks to Jenny Cheeseman, Ellen Hewitt, and Megan Hillier, and their curatorial and registry teams at CPAC for their considerable support and assistance to LAS and to our exhibition committee, and to Pamela Rodaria and Di Halloran who work tirelessly in your interest in all of the, those unseen activities which culminate in today. Sadly, LAS lost a talent, a very bubbly, a very dear friend in Gil Fala, last year's scholarship winner in recent months. LAS is so pleased that Gil's husband and sister have seen able to allow Gil's works entitled My Secret Urban Sanctuary to be presented in the Marsden Gallery and I encourage you to include that gallery when you visit and experience for yourself this year's contributions. And now we look forward to the results of the judging of the adult and youth entries by Georgia Connolly, the manager of exhibition loans and touring at the Art Gallery of New South Wales, and we sincerely thank her for undertaking that difficult task this year. So, welcome to the opening of the 23rd LES Annual Art Exhibition. And in your own way, would you join me in thanking all of those who have made this exhibition a reality in a year so full of challenges. Thank you, Auntie Lynn, for your welcome. And to Craig and John for that introduction to the 23rd Liverpool Art Society exhibition. I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I stand, the Cabrigal clan of the Darug Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. My name is Georgia Connolly, and I am the manager of exhibition loans and touring at the Art Gallery of New South Wales, and I am truly delighted to have judged the prizes here today. It has brought back many fond memories of my time working here at Casula Powerhouse many years ago. 
What an incredible exhibition you have all contributed to. With such diversity and skill, it certainly wasn't an easy task choosing the winners. But with so many wonderful prizes, I'll get straight to it. So starting with our youth entries, kindly sponsored by Liverpool Picture Framing. Up to year six primary school students. Highly commended, Maya Dahir, Reality. Jackson Barlow, Nightfly. And first prize goes to Matilda Maggs, Trees in the Ripples. Year seven to year 12 secondary school students. Highly commended, goes to Yasmin for Sepa. And first prize to Amani Ibrahim, The Real Life Movie. Huge congratulations to you all. What a, a wonderful display of talent from young artists. Now on to the category for adults. Starting with photography and digital works. First prize goes to Glenn Opton Brow. Portrait Van Klapak, Sculpture and 3D Works. First prize to Imad Dahir for Modern Man. For Ceramics, second prize goes to Leanne Bullard, Summer Sidewalk. And first prize to Selma Feeder, COVID Choir. Drawing and or original print, second prize goes to Vivian Mesomeris, A Degree of Difference, Regent Honeyeater. And first prize goes to Fang Min Wu for Broadway. For the watercolour and or pastel paintings, second prize goes to Melvie Connell for Hen Rescue. And first prize to Peter Thompson for Etheridge Ridge Kosciuszko National Park. For the mixed media category, second prize goes to Leslie Richmond for Rooftops of Montmartre. And first prize goes to Veronica Pinchevich, Apartment Life. For the acrylic painting category, third prize to Louise DeMarco Jelavich for Goats. Second prize to Jennifer Phillips, Geica Gorge, Western Australia. And first prize for, to Katrina Jelavich, quick selfie before afternoon tea. The oil and or encaustic painting category. Third prize to Linda Falazzo, Life is Just. Second prize to Josephine Seafred, A House in Ingleburn. And first prize to Robert Hamill, Harbour Morning. So wonderful to see the variety of mediums and categories that the Liverpool Art Society artists have been working with. Congratulations once again to you all. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for today's announcement of the Art Prize Awards for the Liverpool Art Society. This is the 23rd year that they have been given, and I'm really excited to be announcing the inaugural Werriwa Art Award. The winning entry is going to feature on my Christmas cards for 2021 and also showcase what a wonderful place we live in. So I'd like to thank the Casula Powerhouse and the Liverpool Art Society for allowing me to sponsor this award. And the winner of the inaugural Werriwa Art Prize is a degree of difference, Regent Honeyeater, by artist Vivian Mesomeris. Congratulations, it's a beautiful work of art and I can't wait to see it on my Christmas cards next year. Now I'm pleased to move on to the major prizes. Second place winner for the $100 ANZ Judy Pack Memorial History Prize, sponsored by the City of Liverpool and District Historical Society, is Glenn Opton Brow for his portrait of Van Klepak. The first place winner of this prize, sponsored by ANZ and valued at $500, goes to Gary Smith for Bombora Venus. Well done. Next is the $750 ANZ Award for Innovation. This goes to Shazia Fazal 
the COVID-19. And the winner of the $750 ANZ Technical Excellence Prize goes to Svetlana Panov for Addicted to Detail. The Kasula Powerhouse Arts Centre Scholarship Prize and very pleased goes to Charlie Wells for Sunlit Track. And finally, it's time to announce the winner of the $5,000 Acquisitive Liverpool City Council overall winner. It goes to Paul Brocklebank for Willowdale. Wow, huge congrats to this year's winners. Once again, many thanks to our supporters. Without you, this exhibition would not be able to go ahead. And of course, thank you to you, our audience, wherever you may be, for tuning into this online presentation. Now you know who's won and the formalities are out of the way, come to CPAC to see this fantastic exhibition in person.